Hey guys, I'm Susan. Welcome to episode 14 of Fresh Takes and Mistakes, a new vlog where we discuss weight loss, fitness, and all the messy mind stuff in between. Today, we're gonna talk about preparing for success. But before we do, I wanna thank all of my viewers, the ones that have been watching so far, um, for your support. I wanna thank the people that have shared, that have commented, um, and I just wanna tell you guys that I would not be here without you. Um, I would not be doing this without you, so thank you so much, I appreciate you, and thank you so much for watching. So today we're gonna to talk about, like I said, preparing for success. There are a couple of aspects that go into this, and I know that a lot of you maybe have been wondering to yourselves if you wanted to lose weight or if you wanted to really start any goal, but um, today's episode kind of centers a lot around um, losing weight, but the general theme goes for any goal in general, but the actual details are, details are going to be centered around losing weight and or fitness. So I know a lot of you wonder in the beginning, because I definitely did, of uh, trying to lose weight, where do you start um, and I think that's a, something that a lot of people struggle with. I think that's something that a lot of people question. And I'm here to tell you that there's really no wrong answer. Um, however, I will tell you that preparing for success is so important. So what I recommend first before doing anything else is downloading some sort of calorie counting application on your phone, whether that be MyFitnessPal, which is what I personally use. I know that um, Weight Watchers has an app that counts points. They don't count calories, but they count points. And you can set yourself up on several different options as far as their systems or whatever. So you can, that certainly works as well. It's points, but it's basically still setting you up for a calorie deficit, which is the main point. So my recommendation first is to go ahead and download one of those apps and I would spend a day or two just tracking what you eat, but don't put yourself into a calorie restriction at all. I guarantee you that if you track what you eat and you don't restrict your calories, um, you're probably going to be pretty surprised by the amount of calories that you're taking in every day. Um, I, I do encounter quite a few people that say, well, I don't eat a lot or I don't eat all day and then I eat at night or what have you. Um, and I do find that if you aren't counting your calories, especially if you're not eating during the day, then you end up taking in so many extra calories at the end of the day that you're way over your calorie count. And then you wonder, why am I not losing any weight? Why am I gaining weight? I don't eat all day. That's because you're starving your body all day long. And then in the evening, you're eating a bunch of calories. I do also encounter some situations where people maybe are drinking a lot of their calories, either via sodas, um, putting sugars in their coffee that they drink all day, um, the milks in their coffee that they drink all day, um, or even drinking alcoholic beverages. So there definitely are lighter options for those things. Um, but that's another thing that like people don't realize that you are maybe drinking too many calories as well. So anyway, first things first, I would say definitely download some sort of calorie counting application. And like I said, I super highly recommend giving yourself a day or two to go ahead and just track those calories and don't even restrict your diet. I guarantee that some things you're going to enter if you enter them beforehand and you probably will choose to not eat them as a result of the amount of calories that you're going to take in. Um, but if you if you enter them after you eat them or what have you um, and you just see the amount of calories that you are taking in, that'll help you just kind of get a little bit of a reality check in what you are taking in and maybe the kind of changes that you need to be making. So that's number one. Number two is something that I am sure you have all heard before and I know it's hard, but I'm going to talk you through it is prepping your meals. So I do see a lot online where people prep like five meals or seven meals, you know, at the beginning of the week. And I don't really recommend that. That's not what I do. And I don't want to tell you that I do something that I don't do or recommend something that I don't do um, because I just think that it's not, that's not fair. So what I'm going to tell you is when I prep meals, I don't prep more than like three if I do. Um, and what I typically will do is I'll either prep extra food from the dinner that I'm making. So like if I make dinner on Sunday or Monday, I'll prep like three extra servings of it so that I can also eat lunches throughout the week. Or I will get up in the morning and prep um, a few meals, just total of about three servings for myself for you know, a few days a week. But the reason I don't really prep five meals, well, I have two reasons. Number one, for me, always, 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 something comes up during the week. Either I get invited to lunch or there's some kind of lunch given at work or something, something comes up, comes up during the week that I'm probably not going to eat what I prepped. So if I prep three, there's pretty much a guarantee that I'm going to eat that food 
at some point, even if I don't eat it the day that I planned on it, um, and it doesn't get wasted. And I'm kind of the, I'm the kind of person who I can't stand to cook. It's not necessarily wasting food that's my problem. I don't want to cook it and then turn around and not eat it because I typically like what I cook. So that's really why I don't prep five meals. If you want to and that works for you, I, I don't discourage it. But for me, it doesn't it doesn't work. So the other reason too is that I'll get tired of eating the same thing over and over and over again. So um, I don't prep five meals. I'll prep three. So, but I will say prepping your meals is very important. So um, I know a lot of you are moms. Uh, what I recommend is probably just making some extra meals when you're making dinner for the kids. Um, I know that sometimes you're probably making stuff that's different for you than you do for the kids because they might not want to eat something um, that is necessarily healthy, but I would say definitely just do it at the same time as when you're feeding your kids. So if you're prepping their lunches or you're prepping their dinner or you're making their dinner, I would say go ahead and just um, make it at the same time. Or if you get up at a decent hour in the morning to give yourself a couple minutes of quiet time or what have you, that's a good idea as well. I like to get up a little bit extra early and make the stuff in the morning. Um, I don't know if my neighbors have seen me out here grilling on the grill at 6.30 in the morning, but I definitely have done it. And there is no shame in my game whatsoever. I will talk a little bit later in another episode about making your veggies um, maybe a little bit more tasty so that you don't necessarily have to make two meals, one that's healthy for you and one that's uh, a little bit more tasty for the kids. Um, I definitely think that I have a trick or two up my sleeve as far as making those veggies a little bit more tasty. I would say my wife definitely agrees with that. So, But we're not going to get into that today. The next thing I want to talk about today is we've already talked about prepping your meals. I want you to also prep your snacks, prepare your snacks and give yourself snack options and prepare to eat snacks. So when you go to, to track your food at the beginning of the day or throughout the day or whatever, I would say leave yourself some room for those snacks. Or if you want to just do mini meals in between your meals, because I typically will eat two to four snacks a day, um, more like four. Uh, so my snacks are a little bit smaller, um, but my meals are kind of big. So if you wanted to do bigger snacks, you could do less snacks. I would say do at least one snack between every meal. So what I recommend as far as snacks are concerned, depending on what you want to do, um, I like combination snacks a lot. So I will eat the Dannon Greek light and fit yogurts. They have a banana or I'm sorry, they do have a banana, but uh, they have a pumpkin pie one that I absolutely love. Um, if you're my friend on Facebook, then you saw me ranting about me not being able to find it at Walmart North. Um, but I did find it and it is my saving grace in the fall because I absolutely love it. It is amazing. It is my favorite. And what I do is I take, um, I get these little like snack packs of Belveda cookie chip things and I put a half a bag of them in my Greek yogurt and it's like, they're like cinnamon flavored. So it's like eating a pumpkin pie. But if you don't like pumpkin pie, they have tiramisu, they have creme brulee, they have, um, black cherry, they have, they have Oh, strawberry cheesecake. They have every flavor. There's a flavor in there that you will like unless you just absolutely hate yogurt, in which case I would say look at options like beef jerky. Beef jerky is a fantastic snack. Um, I really, really like the um, Fiber One bars. I really like to have pepperonis and cheese for my snacks. Nuts and seeds are also a really good idea. Um, but I would say definitely, definitely, definitely prepare yourself, prepare your snacks, take your snacks into work with you. Um, and, and plan to eat those snacks. Be prepared to definitely eat those snacks and plan them in your day. Because I find that if you wait until lunch to eat, you're more hungry. And then after you eat, because you probably eat really quickly, you're wanting to eat more. So you're going to the vending machine or you're going to the bakery down the street or whatever the case may be. And you're getting something a little extra because your food hasn't really had enough time to hit your stomach yet. So you're really not, you're not full because you haven't eaten all morning and you were starving before. And that's actually a natural response that our body does if we get hungry. And I know that when I say starving, I don't mean like starving, like days starving. But I mean like four hours is kind of a fast for our body. Um, and our body's natural response is at that next meal to get as much calories as we can and get as much nutrients as we can because we don't know when the next meal is coming. So I know that that's a little dramatic for, you know, to say starving. But the more you fuel your body the more likely you're going to be able to restrict those calories and give yourself that calorie deficit that you need. Um, but the longer you wait to eat, the more likely you are that you're going to binge and you're going to eat a bunch of food and go way over your calorie count because your body's like, give me all the food, give me all the food. 
So anyway, I went off on a little bit of a tangent, um, but snacks, snack snacks are super duper important. And I won't talk too much about it because I know that it's not, um, I mean, it's, I mean, I guess it really is. So I will talk a little bit about it. Water. You guys have got to drink water. Number one, if you drink more water, you're going to be less hungry. That's first thing. Number two, the more water you drink, the more you're hydrating your body, the better decisions you're going to make because you're hydrating your mind. And the minute you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So the aim should be to not get thirsty. And I know a lot of you don't like water. You don't like the way the water tastes, but there are so many options. So I would say there are so many water flavoring things, Crystal Light, Neo, all kinds of stuff that you can get at Walmart. They've got tea flavor. They've got orange flavor. They've got lemonade flavor. They've got fruit punch flavor. They've got or orange soda or grape soda or whatever. They've got all kinds of, excuse me, they've got all kinds of flavors that you could have in your water. Um, but the important thing is to definitely hydrate your body. The other thing I will say that if you don't like the, the taste of water or whatever the case may be, the more you drink it, the more you crave it. I was not a water person. I did not like water. I did not like the taste of water. I wanted, I was a Mountain Dew girl. Mountain Dew, straight up, Mountain Dew. And I love water now. I can't even drink a Mountain Dew just because I, it's just too much sugar now. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is drink more water. You need to hydrate your body. You're gonna be less hungry if you drink more water. And also you're gonna make better decisions and your body is gonna function at a better level if you drink more water. Anybody that I talk to will tell you that if they tell me there's anything wrong with them, the first thing I'm asking is, how much water have you had today? Are you tired? How much water have you had today? You got a headache? How much water have you had today? Is your stomach hurting? How much water have you had today? Does your muscles hurt? How much water have you had today? That is my question. Drink more water. I promise you, you will feel better if you drink more water. The last thing that I will talk about with regard to preparation is going to be exercise. And I know I'm going to go back to this. A lot of you guys are busy, your moms. You have to find, you know, time in your schedule for these things. And that's hard. And I, I know it is. It's hard to find it when you're not taking care of 15 people. I get it. Like, it's hard. I would start small. Start very, very small. Get up 15 minutes early and take a walk. Do 10 squats in the bathroom every time you go. That's how I started. When I was at work, I would do 10 squats in the bathroom every time I went. And then I built up to 15 squats. And then I was doing a half an hour of weights at the gym. And then I was doing an hour of weights at the gym. Now I'm doing, um, I was doing a half an hour of walking on my lunch break. Now I'm doing an hour of walking on my lunch break. Um, and that's, that's what I'm doing. Sometimes I walk in the evenings as well. But you got to start small. And you have to schedule it. If you don't schedule it, it's not going to happen. If you don't plan for it, it's not going to happen. If you don't prepare for it, it's not going to happen. So, you know, I'm going to end today's episode on this quote that I know we have all heard. I don't even know who said it, but I'm going to go ahead and say, if you are not preparing for success, you are preparing for failure. Make sure that you're preparing. Make sure that you are prepping. Make sure that you are planning, planning for success so you're not planning for failure. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope that that helps some of you guys that were wondering where you could get started, how you could get started, where you should start, what you should do. Feel free to comment below. I will respond to you if you have any questions, if you want any advice, if you want any suggestions. If you want me to list out every kind of snack that I have in this house that I plan for during the day that I like, that you can go see if there's something that you like at Walmart, I will comment back and I will tell you what I eat during the day. You can also um, add me on my fitness pal. I think that my name on there is my one and only life with an underscore between every word. And my diary is open for everybody. My food diary is open for everybody. I am not perfect. I do not eat right every day. I do not stay within calories every day. I don't even track every day. But I will say that, I mean, I've lost 100 pounds. I'm doing something right. If you want to follow me on there so that you can see what I'm doing, see if any of it works for you. If some kind of altered version of it works for you, you feel free to go ahead and do that. I am happy to share any bit of my journey with you guys. That's why I'm here. I want to be able to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching episode 14. Make sure to share, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you are called to do. I will see you guys next week. Have a great one.